All right, are you ready for a weird video? Here's the deal. Uh, we're gonna call this pattern interrupt. Now I've had just a crazy week. Three fifty one. Three fifty one. Rover shit. Hut hut. Has he had a long history of mental illness? As long as I've known him. But I want to cover this next video for the Linux Plus course, and so. Sitting here waiting for my wife to be done with work because she's on a knee scooter and I have to like, you know, drive her and move her scooter and stuff. Anyway, while I'm here waiting for her to be done, I'm going to teach the lesson from memory. And if you know my memory, that's a scary thought, but nonetheless, we're gonna try. And then when I get back to my office, I'm gonna edit it up and see if I covered everything. So here's the deal. Uh, I've done this stuff. This is a user creation uh, stuff, right? And so we've done this a lot of times. There's even a video that actually covers this completely. So even if this is a complete farce, uh, check up there and I will put a link to the video in the Linux Essentials course that covers account creation. But we're gonna do this. Okay, so first of all, uh, we're going to start with the user add command, which is the command that you, surprise, surprise, add a user with um, user add comes with some flags now you're going to do user user add dash h lowercase h and press enter it'll give you all the commands that you can do now the nice thing is most of the things uh, work fine by default in fact if you want to see the defaults all you have to do is type user add dash capital d and it will show you the defaults and if there's a default there that you don't like like i think by default usually uh, in Ubuntu, at least, the the user's shell when they're creating a new user is a bin sh. I prefer bin bash. Maybe you prefer bin zsh if that's installed. What you do to change the default, now, I, I should preface this, you have to be root or use sudo to do all these commands because they require root access. You're creating users. You have to be root. So anyway, uh, it's going to be user add uh, space dash capital D for defaults. And then if you just do that, it lists it. But if you then add another command like space and then dash lowercase s and specify a shell like bin bash and press enter, it'll change the default. So if you do user add dash capital D again, it's going to show you, oh look, we changed the default, okay? So the, most of the defaults are just fine. So when you create a user, all you do is say, again, as root, user add, and then the username. But here's here's the part that annoys me. If you do it that way, it won't create the user's home directory by default. It will specify where the user's home directory should be in the home directory by default, uh, but it doesn't create it. So in order to do that, you have to use the, oh, this is, this is hurting my brain a little bit, uh, user add dash lowercase m, I believe. I hope I'm right. Uh, and that's going to make the directory. So basically we're just gonna say uh, sudo or as root, user add space dash lowercase m space let's say susie we're going to create the user susie and press enter now that user exists and if you check her home directory should be there as well now she doesn't have a password which is a pain in the butt uh, but what you can do is say as root or using sudo passwd space her username susie and then it's going to prompt you twice to create a password for her and then she should be able to log in because the defaults do all the things that allow her to log in okay now we can do the same exact thing with a group now by default it's going to create a her user group like Susie's group named Susie same user by default uh, however <coughs> Let's say uh, Susie's part of a marketing team. So we can create a group just like we created a user and it's a little bit simpler. Uh, basically, uh, there's not a whole, you can do group add space dash lowercase h to see the different options, but we're just gonna say uh, group add space and then marketing, for example, and it'll create that group marketing. And uh, that's, the group exists. No, she's not added to it. We use a different tool for that. But first of all, let's use the next set of tools. If I remember the slide correctly, uh, we, have, we, we just covered uh, user add and group add, but we also have user del, which is delete the user, right? Sometimes we need to delete a user. These are all local users, but user del uh, is similar to user add, but it deletes them. Ha ha ha. Uh, no, but what we need to do is make sure to look at the dash H for the help. So uh, we're going to say user del space dash lowercase H. 
press enter, it's going to show us all the commands. And when you are deleting a user, there are two things specifically that you have to do. Uh, you want to do user del dash F for force, and that's going to force delete the user's file. And this is an ah, I remember. And the second uh, option, so you're gonna do uh, user del dash F for force, space dash R for remove, and that's going to remove the user's home directory and their mail spool folder. If they have a spool folder for local email, usually they don't, but you know, it's it, it deletes everything if you put that in there. So dash F dash R uh, space, and then Susie, that's the user that we created and then press enter again as root or with sudo and Susie will be gone. It'll probably give you an error about like, oh, there's no spool directory because we didn't set up mail for her. Uh, anyway, so she's gone, right? Now the same exact thing with group Dell. Uh, it's, I mean, it's pretty simplistic. There are no files usually. I mean, you can still do group Dell and then dash lowercase h to see the different commands, but pretty much just like uh, we didn't really use any flags when we created a group, same thing when you Dell a group or delete a group or group Dell. You can just say uh, group to, as as root or pseudo group Dell and then marketing. Okay, and so it's gone. So we've undone everything, right? We created a user, created a group, and then we deleted a user and deleted a group. Okay, I'm gonna leave it to you to recreate Susie. Okay, so uh, let's recreate her because the next thing we need to do is um, user mod and user mod is the thing that you're going to use the most of, okay? Uh, user mod is something where you can modify an existing user. And let's say we wanna add Susie to a group, etc. See where I'm going here? So create Susie again, and you know, cheat sheet, it's gonna be a sudo or as root, uh, user add space dash M for make her home directory, space Susie. Okay, Susie is created again. There is a group named Susie. You can type ID space Susie, and that will uh, show you uh, that Susie has a group named Susie as well. Okay, so Susie, Susie is there, uh, but we wanna add her to a secondary group, okay? Uh, so let's make that group again. So uh, group add space marketing, boom, that's done. The marketing group is there. Susie doesn't belong to it yet. Uh, what we need to do there is user mod space dash capital G and a capital G specifies an additional group or a supplementary group. Okay, so we don't wanna change her lowercase g group, like the one that is Susie, like her main group, but we wanna change her supplementary groups. So dash capital G and then marketing. But, 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 before that, do um, we have to say uh, user mod dash lowercase a, because that appends instead of replaces. Okay, so let's say she already belongs to three different auxiliary groups. We don't want to just have her assigned to marketing. So if we do user mod dash lowercase a space dash capital G and then marketing, right? So we wanna add her, the A, to the supplementary capital G group marketing space Susie. That's going to add Susie to that group. And then if you do ID Susie again, it's gonna show that we did it. We added her to that group without deleting any of her other groups. And you can do that with any number of groups. When you do the A, it just appends the group that you're specifying instead of uh, erasing her supplementary groups and just doing the ones that you specify. Okay, so that's that's how that works. Now group mod is very similar. You can just do group mod uh, dash H and see the options there. Basically you can change the name of a group. Let's say marketing isn't what they call themselves anymore because that's not really cool. Cool. So now it's like uh, marketing is now user engagement. So we need to change the group to user engagement. That's where we would do group mod. Okay. Uh, if I'm remembering what else is there, uh, we already talked about the shell that's listed on the slide. Uh, we use the ID command. It shows the groups that they that people have. Um, a w and who. So W just on itself, you know, Unix is great with really short commands. So W stands for what? What is a user doing? So type W on the command. You don't have to be root to do this either. Type W and enter. It'll show you all the logged in users and what they're currently doing. So if you have a bunch of people SSH into the system or it's a multi-user system, you're going to see all the users logged in and what 
they're doing. That's what the W stands for, I think. <laughs> I've always I've always said it was a what, but the W command uh, will show you what everybody's doing. Uh, the who command, H-W-O, will show you who's logged in. It shows you similar information. I think it shows you how they're logged in. Like if they're a local TTY user, if they're an SSH user, um, as opposed to W, it shows you what they're doing. Who shows you how they're logged in. So it's a subtle difference, but it just, they both show you the users that are logged in, but uh, they show you different information about those users. And I think, I think that's it. I think that's, those are all the things I wanted to cover. I did it in about 10 minutes. Uh, I'm gonna go through this uh, again with the computer to see if my teaching is correct. But like I said, even if I screwed up, I'll make a note during the final edit of this video, but there is uh, the Linux Essentials video that covers all this stuff in depth and uh, it's not recorded from my car. Thank you for tuning in. I hope this was fun for you. A little bit of pattern interrupt for all of us. Uh, remember to learn everything, including how to do videos in your car. <laughs> do what you love, including making videos in your car. And most importantly, be kind to people who are making videos in their car. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for sticking around this long.